South African legendary musician Mamle Tambulu has remembered the late Sidney Poitier for his role in the fight against apartheid. The late African-American actor, who's also a director and activist, passed away last week at the age of 94. As Hollywood's first black Oscar winner, Poitier starred in films such as The Will Be Conspiracy, which put the spotlight on South Africa's battle with oppression. Mamle Tambulu joins us now via our video link to relive the 1960s, so to speak, in the United States and the late actors' anti-apartheid activism. Mamle Tambuli, it's great to have you on the program. A real honor, in fact. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us. You know, some of Poitier's films, I've come to learn, were actually banned in South Africa by the apartheid government. And that is obviously because of the messages that were explored around black oppression. But in what other ways do you reckon Poitier was able to inspire activists like you in some respect? to continue with their work? Um, well, I, I think he, he, he realized his background because he came from the Cat, I, Cat, Cat's Island. And most of the people from the island, from the Caribbeans, when they were in the United States, they became activists because, because they came from areas that were very active in terms of politics. People, uh, I can give you an example with Farrakhan and, and many others. Uh, Malcolm X, you know, the list is long. So they were very astute uh, about what was happening around the world. They were very, very in tune with that. And uh, when I think when he heard me do something uh, that connected him to his own background, uh, it made him feel that, you know, like uh, people like us needed a platform. And that's what he offered. Mm. He just gave me a platform to express myself and talk about my country and what was happening in the country. Let's speak about and, uh, that. Yeah. I'm very appreciative of that. And I also know that he himself went through a lot of changes in the United States because he was not from the United States. Absolutely. We understand. In fact, he's from the Bahamas. Let's speak about the moments leading up to your interaction with him. I mean, you know, before that happened, did you know of him? And if so, what no. was your perceptions of the kind of man he was before and after your interaction? Well, I... I think the first impression that I had of him before I even met him was the fact that he made movies that moved people, mm. movies that connected with the African world. And he never made a movie that disappointed anyone who was an African. And to me, that was a plus. And I fell in love with his work before I even met him. And, and I got these comments from a lot of other African people not only in, in the diaspora, but here in the continent as well. So he was very dignified. He was, very, um, very, was a very proud man. And uh, he didn't think that Hollywood was just about star, you know, having stars in your eyes. You know, he knew that he had a responsibility to his community. And that I appreciated. Then I met him through Mr. Belafonte when I was working with Harry. Um, I was doing a concert at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. He came to see the show because it was very close to Harry. They were very, very, very good buddies. And both of them came from the Caribbeans, of course. And, and they started their careers around the same time. But Harry, of course, chose to be a, a performer, a singer. And the, uh, the Poirier decided to be an actor mm -hmm. and also a director later on. So when I did my show, I sang um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in my program, I did uh, Basheli Bonge, and he heard the song. But, you know, like I didn't think anything of it uh, because it was one of the songs that I always sang in my, in my shows. Um, I think two weeks later, I was in Canada with Harry. He, Harry said to me, you know, Sydney is doing a movie, and he's thinking of you doing that song that he heard you sing at the Greek theater. And I was like, what? Sidney Poitier was in the show because I didn't even know he was in the show. He said, yes, he heard you sing that song and he wants it. He wants it in the show. And I was excited, <laughs> but very apprehensive because, you know what, I'd never met him. Yeah. And, um, you know, young woman from South Africa getting into a movie, you know, movie that is being produced by Sidney Poitier was like overwhelming. But um, after a while, he called, he said, you know what, I'd like you to do, a, to do a movie with you, and I'm doing it in London. But I would like the, the, not only you singing it, I want it to have a choir. Right. And I got very excited about that, uh, because that's how we sang the song in South, here in South Africa. 
So in London, it was easier for me to uh, organize a group of South African singers because at the time, 1961, most of the artists from South Africa stayed behind and I utilized those artists to come in and perform. And they were ready to do it because it was like, you know, we don't even want to be paid. We just want to sing this song. This is very close to our hearts and minds. Um, we did it. Oh, of course, I made sure that they get paid. <laughs> um, so that's really how it happened. But here is the one who connected me with Mr. B Mr. Sidney Potter. There are great lessons to take from that recollection. I mean, you've already mentioned in part of your response that Potier was able to make work that moved people. But the yes. sense I'm getting is that he also created space. We've kind of remembered him, remembered him as a pioneer, as the, the first black American man to receive an Oscar for Best Actor. But you also yes. get a sense that as he moved up, he made way for people to move up with him. And Absolutely. it looks like you're one of those people. Yes, yes. Yes. And I think there are many others that he, you know, he, he, he brought, brought to the fore. Um, but I'm just grateful that I was able um, to, to impart something to him, and he imparted a lot to me in terms of his movies that he made. He was very conscious, very conscious about uh, what he puts out there. Yeah. And that's going to be his legacy to yes. a lot of people. Speaking about legacy, I mean, you know, we, in the lead-up to our discussion with you, rightly, I think, called you one of the iconic musicians that we have in this country. And I guess there's something to be said as we reflect on Potier's lives about mm -hmm. ways through which we could honor those icons who are still in our midst. How best do we do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, we, you know, we just did our work. It's very difficult for me to choose and say this is how I should be honored. Yeah. Um, and even the honoring, um, yes, it's a good thing. I think it's nice when you know people remember what you did. But it was a duty. You know, um, I, I, always want to re I always remind myself it was a duty. You know, I was part of that struggle. I also went through those changes. I went through that pain. So it was my job, you know. And whether I'm honored or not, it doesn't matter. Mm. To me, it's about us doing the work which we finally, um, well, I, I don't want to say we are co totally, we've conquered totally. We still have a lot of work to do. But it was something that we needed to do. And those platforms, for me, they played a very important role. And that's why I will continue to respect all the people who gave me that platform. Mr. Belafonte is one of them, and Sydney. I will always remember them in that light because they did, were not selfish. They realized that we needed space to express and talk about the pain that we're going through. And you know what? Hey, I needed to do that. Yeah. It was a duty for me. I can see you light up as... You speak about that, and I guess, you know, it, it does also beg the question about ways through which we can carry, I guess, carry on allowing people to heal. I mean, you know, your, your perceptions matter because in part of the role you've played in our country. I can't help but wonder, given what you've done to get us where we are, even musically speaking, what mm -hmm. your reflections about where the country actually is are. We have a long way to go. Um, I think um, when freedom came, uh, so to speak, um, it meant different things to different people. Yeah. And we also have to remember that the system that we found ourselves in, we didn't understand. We had no clue about it. We just found, we heard the names being mentioned, freedom, freedom, but we did not connect to know exactly what we want out of this freedom. And I think that's why we find ourselves in the mire that we are in right now. And I'm just hoping that uh, as we go along, we will learn to learn what freedom means to us as a country. We haven't learned that. You know, we talk differently about it. We have different ideas about it. But we haven't come up with a plan that says, South Africa, this is what freedom means, or should mean to you. Have you, come any, yeah. Have you come any closer to figuring out what freedom means, at least to you? Yes. Freedom means making sure that the people, it's about the people. It's, a, it's not about material. It's about people. 
people need housing. I mean, when we talk about Ubuntu, uh, I, I mean, I, I listen to people um, talking about human rights, human rights, human rights, and I ask myself, how come we haven't developed Ubuntu? Because Ubuntu, to me, means freedom. People need housing. People need food. People need the amenities that are necessary, education, all those things. Uh, uh, what called health and things like that. To me, that's what you talk when you talk freedom. Because China school is so mm. no koko. You know, who made sure that life becomes meaningful when you've got all the things that you need to live by? And to me, that's what freedom means. And Not to which I have a car, yeah. uh, I have a big house, I have all that stuff. But people matter. And I guess at the heart of it is also about ensuring that their dignity is kept intact. Yes. Again, given the work that you've been able to do, I'm sure these conversations might have taken place at the time among people who were in the struggle with you, so to speak. Yes. Given what has now taken place and what we're seeing in this country, are you at all, I guess, visited by feelings of betrayal? To a certain extent, yes. Uh, I do feel that way. Um, I feel that, um, you know, like I said, um, freedom means different things to different people. Some of them, I don't think they were thinking about betraying the, the masses of, of this country. It's just that it meant a different thing altogether. And we need to be educated about that. We all need to sit down and be, start understanding that when we were out there, what was the reason for it? Mm -hmm. We've lost that reason. You know, um, and, um, you know, my freedom is totally different from others. I think completely different about it. Yeah. Uh, my people are important. And um, I think that we are continuing with the lie, you know, of saying, oh, the, you all were happy, the land is, you no, know, truth is important. Let's talk truth. The truth will, will set us free. And it's on that note Indeed. that we'll have, to, we'll have to leave it. Thank you so much for being so generous with your time, with your insights. And with what you've been able to figure out about this journey called life, Mama Letambulu, of course, an iconic, legendary musician here in South Africa, also anti-apartheid activist. Once again, appreciate your time on the AM Report.